Hello and welcome to the Block Solid podcast where we talk about the evolution of the property market and the blockchain market, the newest tech that enhances and revolutionizes the world of real estate as we know it and how we, the owners, the buyers, the renters, the investors, the inventors can benefit from it all. And today I have a very special guest, Rafael Kogman, CEO of Trust Token, the core team responsible for building the leading unsecured lending protocol, TrueFi. Welcome, Rafael. Thank you, Yael. It's great to be here. It's great to have you here. I'm actually super curious about TrueFi, which is a crypto lending marketplace and about the recent product that you launched and that you can actually show the viewers that will see this on YouTube and and go through different things from uh, what prepared you for this world of DeFi. Um, You know, what kind of things uh, in your career caused you to jump on the other side, right? And finally, what we are to expect from this market of DeFi for real world assets for, you know, and lending against crypto or real world assets. Is that all right? That's all right. Let's do it. All right. Let's do it. Well, first of all, uh, tell us where you're from. So I'm from San Diego. I grew up here and then um, went to Stanford to study computer science uh, and then just went into the tech world from there. Amazing. So how did you get into blockchain? Uh, I first encountered it when I was an undergrad and but didn't didn't really dive into it that much. And then it was in 2017 when it was really blowing up and I was running a company that was doing something completely different. And we decided, wow, we're just going to hard pivot and we're going to launch a blockchain product. And we were off to the races. Amazing. So when did you launch Trust Token? When did you start Trust Token? Um, so started the company originally in at the end of 2015, beginning of 2016. Um, and at the time, we were actually started making software for estate planning, helping mm-hmm. people get their wills and trusts. Um, and then we launched our first product in the blockchain space in 2017 um, when we launched True USD, the US dollar backed stablecoin, which now is about $1.2 billion in market cap. And that really pioneered the whole USD stablecoin space, which now has sure. USDC and BUSD and HUSD and a gazillion other players in there. But at the time, there was Tether and that's it. Wow. Okay. That's really impressive. So how did you get from there to TrueFi? So we were growing through USD and we were looking at how people were using stablecoins and we started to realize that stable coins were an interesting piece of the puzzle. You know, being able to have a US dollar account or even a multi-currency account in everyone's pocket all around the world, being able to send money easily, cheaply, 24-7. Mm-hmm. That's a cool piece of foundation, but that's that's very far from being the real killer applications of where blockchains gonna, are going to go. We see stable coins as an important building block. But we were watching, okay, who's, what are people using these stable coins for? And DeFi was quickly becoming one of the largest use cases of stable coins. And we saw what was happening with the over-collateralized lending in DeFi, protocols like Maker and Aave and Compound, the explosive growth that they were, that they were getting, especially when stable coins came onto the scene. If you look at what people want to borrow from those kinds of protocols, it is primarily stable coins. Right. So we realized, okay, there's a big opportunity here. No one is doing un or under collateralized lending in DeFi. It is a very tough problem. You have to figure out how to actually credit score borrowers, how to set right. rates and terms. It's much more difficult than just taking 150% collateral, mm-hmm. but it's a giant market, huge. Uh-huh. And if we can crack that, that could be that could ultimately become one of the largest sectors that DeFi yeah. has ever seen. So how did you crack that? How do you evaluate users in DeFi? Good question. Well, so, Borrowers, I guess, in DeFi. Yeah. So it's, it's not easy. And part of, the, um, part of the conclusion that we've come to is that um, it's very difficult to really do that in a fully decentralized way. So the way we think about the protocol that we have built and are still continuing to build is that it is a platform 
for asset managers that know a particular area. And the protocol itself is decentralized and is open for dozens and at some point even hundreds of asset managers to come on board and run lending portfolios where they're targeting a specific area. You could be lending against real estate, which I think we're going to touch on in a minute. You could be lending to crypto trading firms. You could be lending in emerging markets. You could be lending to small businesses. There's a million different lending areas that you might want to tackle. It's going to require a certain amount of specialized knowledge in a centralized individual or business to target each one. And we've got an open protocol, an open marketplace for anyone to come and do that. Gotcha. So let's jump first in a very simple use case and then go to real estate, right? So um, the simpler use case is if I have some crypto, I can come to you or I guess, um, you know, first of all, I can come and contribute uh, my crypto to the uh, lending pool, right? And then I can also use that crypto to borrow, uh, to get a loan, right? Or uh, let me know if my understanding is correct. Well, so so close. If you've got some stable coin, you can definitely come to our protocol, TrueFi, put yeah. it into one of our lending pools and start earning yield. Not a problem. Right. Right. Now on the borrowing side, because we are our protocol is do, you know, has professional asset managers doing real uh, uncollateralized loans, uh -huh. that is mostly to institutions uh -huh. and gotcha. only to individuals in very specific situations where it fits with the the, the target market that a certain asset manager is focusing on. So uh, if you are an average crypto user today, you cannot come to TrueFi and get a loan. You can come to TrueFi and get yield, but not get a loan. If you are, let's say, a very, like you're a very legit crypto trading firm with a strong balance sheet, or you, you know, fit into one of the other segments that okay. our protocol does a lot of lending in, then you can come to TrueFi you know, have your credit assessed in the appropriate way and then potentially get a loan. And sometimes, you know, if someone has the right credit, you know, we've got asset managers on a protocol that sometimes are doing, you know, $50 million, or even $100 million loans, or sometimes $1 million loans. But, you know, th these can be large B2B loans, uh, but they're not yet available for, you know, the average crypto consumer because we don't have a way for them to really demonstrate their credit worthiness, you know, of other course. than- by posting 150% collateral, which is that's really the market that Compound and Ave and other folks yeah. are targeting. I understand. So you are DeFi on the lending side and you are CeFi on the borrowing side. You know, that's one way to think about it. That's not quite how we think about it. Um, we think about it as more like a decentralized platform for asset managers to come on board. And those asset managers are centralized and are ultimately going to have to make these centralized lending decisions right. for each borrower. So, right. so yes, there is definitely a CFI component of it, but you know we see that as really a, a strength, not a weakness, because you know we've always thought that the most interesting parts of blockchain are in that bridge between CFI and DeFi, or between uh, TradFi and DeFi. And that's part of, you know, when we built True USD, which was the first legit USD stable coin, you know, we thought we thought the same way. We thought, okay, these totally decentralized stable coins that people are working on, that might work, but a lot of people want to be able to get US dollars from a bank, you know, uh, by redeeming their stable coin. And, right. and so that's how we thought, you know, stable coins are going to be a key building block. Same thing with TrueFi. Yes, you want to get a good yield on your on your stable coin and be able to you know, put it into protocol and put it into a farm and use it in the whole wonderful DeFi ecosystem that we've got. But ultimately that's going to be backed by real loans being made by a real asset manager, whether that's against real estate or whether that's to emerging to businesses uh -huh. or in emerging markets, you know, in, in a, a market that, that has real fundamentals for that yield. Right. But then you can think about, think of TrueFi really as a semi-decentralized underwriter because you are dealing with risk and you do have some sort of actuarial or economic kind of evaluation of these asset managers based on credit score, I'm understanding, right? Yeah, so actually, yeah, let me, let me actually, if I can, yeah. for, for folks that are watching on YouTube, let me sh show you some of the offerings that we've got today. That's great, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, and can walk you through it. So, yeah. 
So this is our website, app.trufi.io. It's been live for about 18 months. Um, protocols originated, we just passed $1.66 billion of loans originated all directly on the blockchain in stable coin going to borrowers accounts. Um, half a billion dollars in TVL, total value locked right now. So, you know, not the world's largest, not the world's largest DeFi protocol, but definitely up there. And um, we can definitely do real size. We've proven that this model can really work. And we've got a couple of different, uh, we have a whole bunch of different uh, pools and portfolios that you can deploy capital into if you okay. are looking for yield on your stable coin. Uh -huh. So um, this includes, um, we have what are called DAO pools that are actually managed by our DAO, governed by TRU holders, the holders of the governance token of the protocol. Yep. Um, and these pools lend to end borrowers, but they also are doing more and more lending to other portfolios on the protocol. So you can think of these sort of as portfolios of portfolios, similar to fund of funds in right. uh, the traditional finance world. Some right. of these are quite large. You can see you know, 50 or $100 million plus uh, in these pools. Very uh -huh. strong uh, ROIs, you know, 9%, 8% um, APY, which especially in this market, that is a very, uh, you know, that's a very attractive APY when everything yeah. else in crypto is, is very significantly down. Is that for institution I, mainly, the, the, these returns, or can a, and then an individual get, get access this is, to that? It's available for literally anyone. You could be an individual with one USDC in your wallet and you can go and deploy capital into any of these DAO pools. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and then we've got what we call the TrueFi lending marketplace uh -huh. with, um, and this is where a variety of different portfolio managers have launched portfolios with all kinds of different strategies. Uh -huh. And I can, and part of what's interesting about the, about the protocol that we have is it's, it's, it's a platform for people to launch these kinds of lending strategies. And then you, as someone who's got some USDC or another stable coin you want to deploy, you can look through the offerings that we've got and select what would suit your portfolio. So yeah. just as some examples, um, we've, we've launched um, what are called single borrower portfolios, where you get exposure to uh, a series of loans with just a, you know, a single counterparty. So we had one very successful one with Alameda um, that was just lending to Alameda Research um, at about an 8% interest rate, as you can uh -huh. see here. Uh -huh. um, we just recently launched one with blockchain.com uh -huh. that is going to be targeting about an 8% interest rate as well. Uh -huh. um, we have portfolios that have targeted emerging markets. So Karis is, yeah. uh, they're an asset manager on the protocol that does um, lending to technology companies in emerging markets. Nice. Um, so Oftentimes, so some of these companies are making small consumer loans in yeah. emerging markets or small B2B loans in emerging markets. Uh, and Karis is selecting them, evaluating them, and then making you know, bulk loans to those companies. So you can see here, um, uh -huh. uh, this, this portfolio is current ROI about 16%, um, including both the base ROI and also the TRU incentives on top of that. And then since um, we definitely want to talk about real estate, we actually just last week launched this very new portfolio with USDC.homes, which is a group that is using DeFi to raise capital and have credit strategies that are uh, actually going to be lending against uh, real estate. So yeah. this is targeting home buyers in Austin. Uh -huh. And right now, this portfolio is looking to raise about $5 million. But if this is a successful model, uh -huh. we think that this could potentially be hundreds of millions or even billions of dollars of DeFi lending in the future. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm sure you know all the issues with trying to get a conventional mortgage today. There are so many things that are inefficient about that process and using some of this technology and the right sort of underwriting, the right legal docs, et cetera, I think we can potentially make something that is much more streamlined. So that's what, that's what we're excited about. We think this is just the start. I think so too, but I have a very basic question about this. So yes. from what I understand, USDC homes had to, so they want to borrow 5 million. So they need to have some sort of actual cryptocurrency on the side to lock with you guys so they can get the cash. Is that huh. the mechanism? So USDC.homes does, um, does not need to. So they are, they're using our platform 
They're uh-huh. using TrueFi to raise a bunch of capital that's going to yes. be in their lending portfolio on TrueFi, yes. and then they can start issuing loans. I right. understand. So, yes. And how do they, wanna, so how is that, how are, how is their $5 million securitized? That's what I'm wondering. You know, how do lenders know they're going to get their money back? Ah, right. So USDC.homes, the way that they're running this portfolio, it includes uh, folks that want to borrow from you. If you want to borrow from USD at homes, USDC yeah. the homes to buy a piece of real estate, yes. um, they, they require you to put up some collateral in crypto. And then once you actually buy the home, I believe the home also becomes collateral for that loan too. So they're doing, um, and the way they're structuring this is actually as bridge loans, 12 month bridge loans to help you be able to buy a house in cash in, you know, some of the very hot housing housing markets right now, um, and then convert those into over time, uh, longer term loans, like a normal 30 year mortgage. So the five million is actually a credit line, not actual cash money that you give to USDC.homes. It's a credit line that then the individual homeowners will come and have access to borrow against their crypto holdings. Um, that's that's a reasonable way to think about it. Um, ultimately, it's you know it's a portfolio that USDC.homes manages, right. and um, it's actually that um, the, it's called the Teague Law Firm that uh-huh. is, is managing this portfolio with USDC.homes, uh-huh. you can see here. Um, uh-huh. you know, so ultimately, um, they're raising this capital. Um, it's gonna sit in the portfolio. It's gonna sit in the portfolio, yeah. um, whatever they raise, undeployed until they have a yeah. home buyer who you know, needs, let's say right. a million dollar loan, you know, yeah. they'll approve it, you know, yeah. send out that million dollar check uh, uh-huh. and then you know, get repayment with interest over time. Great. So, and so these, this the basically the reason why this is possible because they actually are a registered asset manager, I'm assuming. And so they can deploy, deploy loans. They can, uh, uh, you know, estimate the risk. Yeah. And, and possibly also our investment advisor. So that, um, yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a great space. And I think with today's market, as we see where companies like Celsius are unfortunately going down, um, you need to make sure, and I know you have something to say about that because I can judge by your by your facial expression. So, <laughs> but you know, I, I think that there is a definite need to have real world assets that have a long term value and a more stable value, and kind of pairing that with a crypto world is the real winner. Totally. Yeah. That is the talk of the town right now. People yeah. are looking for things to deploy capital into where they will have strong yields backed by something that can actually produce the strong yields over time, mm-hmm. you know, without taking undue risk. And, yeah. you know, a lot of crypto has not been that people trying to assemble perpetual motion machines of various kinds, and that's fine. And it will probably keep still happening, but I think over time, more and more capital and interest within DeFi I guess it's a pun on the word interest, is going to start moving towards real world assets and other protocols like TrueFi that we think have really strong fundamentals. Yeah, absolutely. So I understand Celsius was on TrueFi until recently, right? Yeah. So actually, you know, part of what's cool about DeFi is you can see, you can see every loan that Mm Uh, the TrueFi protocol has ever made since its inception and the exact terms of those loans and the exact status. You don't even have to trust us. You can just see it directly on the Ethereum blockchain. The blockchain for you. Right, that's that's part of what's cool about DeFi. And I will say, that's also one of the core advantages about if you want to deploy capital using DeFi instead of CeFi, you know, whether those are CeFi crypto apps or whether those are um, TradFi uh, opportunities, but part of the beauty about DeFi really is its transparency. Um, yes, you can lose money. Yes, lots of people do get hacked and, and we can talk about that. It's definitely a major issue, but there is a lot of transparency with these DeFi protocols like TrueFi or Compound or Aave. And if you look at Celsius Network, for example, um, you can actually see here, this is, this is their profile on the TrueFi protocol. Um, they, have, they have three loans that they, that they have taken out historically. Uh, over the course of some time. Um, all are fully repaid. There's no outstanding uh, exposure to them right now from the protocol's perspective. And mm-hmm. um, they actually, uh, there was you know, some very active discussion in the community and with our 
uh, asset managers. Uh, and um, you know, when they were looking for more capital, uh, the folks in the community and the asset managers and the protocol really didn't feel comfortable continuing wow. to engage with them. Um, wow. And so made that decision not to, not to continue. So their last loan from the protocol was repaid, as you can see here on uh, January 20th. Uh, 2022, and, and wow. they didn't uh, receive any loans what since a then. What <laughs> your community had? Really smart yeah. people, really smart people. I mean, for some of us, we were, never could understand um, the kind of uh, ability of a network to to be able to to give to lend out so much money without doing like proper uh, risk management. And, and so I was very surprised that institutions would jump on board. And I think that there is a, a huge need for institutional quality DeFi, right? So, and I think that you guys are providing pretty much that. Yeah, that, that's exactly what we're working on. And, um, but I yes. To the best of us, right? Like how many banks failed in 2020? <laughs> like, and, and there's Lots all of. this regulation happening, right? And then the whole society had to bail out all of these banks. So it's just That's a big right. lesson to the ecosystem. It's a lesson to Celsius. And Celsius pioneered this industry, right? So, uh, and, but it's a big lesson to everyone that there is economics that you have to take into account, right? Exactly. And and it was this kind. It was that kind of bailout that you're referring to, that l led to the creation of Bitcoin. You know, right. like in the Genesis block, Satoshi wrote, "Chancellor on brink of second bailout of banks." And I think that's just. It's very worth us remembering why we're all here to build right. products that you know. There's always going to be financial risk. But the thing that we really can fix is the transparency. And that's uh -huh. the place where I think DeFi has a huge advantage over TradFi. You know, Yael, I think um, what you mentioned about banks is really important to touch on because uh, a lot of us have our money today, at least some of it, sitting in bank accounts, earning almost nothing and with almost zero transparency about what's happening with that money. And the beauty and power of DeFi is you can see, ex you can read the code and you can see exactly what's happening with your money. You know, you can see the lending that a protocol like TrueFi, another DeFi protocol is doing. And then, and you know, exactly the state of, you know, the exactly the state of its loan book. That's not true with a lot of CFI lenders or TradFi lenders. You don't have that level of transparency, especially as a consumer. If you're a large institutional lender, you're writing a hundred million dollar check, there's a lot of leverage that you have, a lot of information that you can pull. But if you are an individual consumer, you are oftentimes getting the short end of the stick. It's just because you don't have the bargaining position to be able to get more. And so DeFi is, I think, really changing that. And I hope that's something that stays and doesn't end up just like TradFi as DeFi continues to grow and grow. Understood. So I, un I understand that you're positioning yourself as this, you know, uh, connector of the real world with DeFi and the real world of institutions and, you know, um, very compliant entities. So I, I want to talk- positioning ourselves. I would say we are. You but... are. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I try, okay, you, you guys are. So let me actually examine um, how much, you know, uh, um, how ready you are to, let's say, take uh, fund, uh, lend or uh, or borrow, I guess, from from institutional lenders and borrowers. Yeah. So um, regarding the token custody, so you know, obviously you you're dealing with crypto. So I know that you have institutional grade crypto custody. I've seen you have a partner that provides that, right? Um, so so largely, um, custody is handled by the individual asset managers on the protocol. Okay. Because the protocol, you know, it's not, you know, it's not like our company is custodying all the protocol funds or something like that. Yeah. You know, the protocol is smart contracts, you know, uh, if you want to deploy capital, the protocol, you just are depositing your capital directly into a smart contract managed by the protocol. And then the, the manager of that portfolio can issue loans directly from it. So the custody is actually all on chain in the DeFi protocol, which we think is really the best way to do that. Now, there is a question of how do, how do the end portfolio managers or borrowers ultimately handle 
off ramp and custody. And that right. is something that we are working on with some uh -huh. of our partners. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll tell you um, a major, a major uh, announcement that we just recently made around our institutional platform um, for that kind of use case you're describing is we actually um, just and recently announced a, an exclusive deal with the, a large broker dealer in the space called Oasis Pro Markets. Yes. And they are that. basically able to provide, you're familiar with them. Um, mm -hmm. They're also in this real world assets, the crypto space, mm -hmm. and they're able to provide that broker dealer coverage for uh, issuances that we want to do in the United States. So um, some of the portfolios that we've launched have been non-US only. Like mm -hmm. if you want to put capital into it, you got to be mm -hmm. outside the US. Mm -hmm. um, but with working with them as our broker dealer, we're able to actually do a fully regulated issuance inside the US. And so that's the kind of thing that is a big selling point. If we have an institutional lender, an institutional portfolio manager that wants to come work with us, being able to offer them that kind of regulatory coverage is very valuable. And also, you know, some of the fiat on-ramping, fiat off-ramping piece, if we've got like a large family office that wants to deploy $20 million, you know, in a regulated way into the opportunities that we've got, uh, you know, being able to work with someone like Oasis Pro Markets to handle that is very valuable. Why do you need to issue securities if you are dealing with loans? Ah, good question. So um, I may need to get my regulatory team on this call so they can go into that in more detail. But um, it has to do with uh, certain loans can become securities uh, depending on their duration mm -hmm. uh, in the U.S., yeah. So, yeah, I understand. Also, if it's a collateralized kind of bond uh, that it's issued to a large number of people, um, yeah, for the purpose of uh, creating some capital gain, and uh, it could be deemed as a security. So, no, absolutely. Okay, now I get it. Very, very smart. Yeah. Very smart. That's the kind of thing that we have to be careful careful of, and so that's why the broker dealers part broker dealership partnership is an important um, mm -hmm. piece of being able to do. You know, really. A full service offering. Well, actually, it's very useful also in the case of security token collateralized borrowing. So that broker dealer relationship totally. will definitely come in handy. Totally. Great. Yeah. Well, we yeah. we got to yeah. launch some stuff around security yeah, token sure. lending. Yeah, I, I know it's our markets uh, very well, and we've we've been also speaking about uh, launching something. So. Um, it, I think it's actually a great time to do this. And, um, you know, the money is literally drying up by the minute in every market imaginable. So I think yeah. you guys are, are going to blow up in the next uh, couple of months. And, in a good way. Uh, in a good way. In a good way. Yeah, in a good way. One thing I'll mention, you know, just in terms of performance, you know, well, I've been seeing in my personal portfolio, Almost every single asset across the board, whether it's equity or crypto or anything else, mm -hmm. you know, everything is doing terribly. And, you know, and the performance of the, the products that we have on TrueFi has been phenomenal. I think I mentioned $1.66 billion of loans originated. Of that, we've already had $1.2 billion of loans repaid with zero defaults. Amazing. That's with $27 million of interest earned on those loans. All of that with zero defaults. So if that's not good performance when the rest of the world is uh, imploding, you know, I think that's, that really speaks for itself. And that's with a level of efficiency and transparency mm -hmm. and speed that you mm -hmm. only get in DeFi. You can literally, with some of our, with some of our, our pools, you could literally like, put in as little as one penny or as much as a hundred million dollars. And people do, you know, you could yeah. be in there for years. You could be in there for 15 seconds. You know, it's yeah. just, it's a level of speed that, that TradFi is, has never been able to match. You can be a true Fi maximalist and like every new penny you put in a protocol, right? That's right. A bit. <laughs> and we actually, we just launched on optimism as well. Yael. I don't know if you're familiar with um, optimism, but no. so they're a major, uh, Ethereum L2. Mm -hmm. And so basically an L2 roll up, it's an optimistic roll up back to the main L1 chain. And basically what that allows us to do is, you know, Ethereum always has these high fees to get your right. space in a block. 
the yeah. beauty of an L2 is that they can do a ton of transactions on the L2 and then just finalize that into a very, very small amount of space on the L1. And yeah. so your transactions on the L2 end up getting, you know, still a, still a quite high level of security, may not, maybe not the full level of security as the L1, but yeah. still a quite high level of security because of the way that ends up getting backed up to the L1 over time. Um, and you have much lower fees. So it gives you a lot of the advantages of Ethereum, but with lower fees, this is really one of the main models for how Ethereum and how blockchains are going to scale in general. And um, we just launched a portfolio. The first portfolio on Optimism is already live. This went live, I think, just last week as well. Um, and that means you can now, even much smaller lenders can actually lend into that portfolio on Optimism. Very low fees, super fast transactions, you know, all uh -huh. those advantages of being on L2. And this, we think, can let us bring this technology to a much larger scale yeah. because of the even higher level of efficiency. I love it. So, Raphael, we've been at wow. it for about half an hour, and this could go on for hours. It so could. Uh, maybe you'll come back. Maybe you'll come back. I would love to come back. It was a blast. Yeah. <laughs> so I what is the next news? What is the news um, next thing that you guys are going to launch? Oh, well, yeah, I was going to say, uh, let's work on a lending portfolio uh, around security tokens together. And then let's come back and have another conversation once that's live and tell everyone about that. How does that sound? Sounds amazing. So thank you for joining me, Raphael, on the Block Solid podcast. Great having you on. You can find us, Solid Block or Block Solid podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or by visiting our website at solidblock.co slash podcast. And where can we find your company, Raphael? So you can find us at trufi.io. That's our product. That's our protocol. And our company is trusttoken.com. And for everyone, Yael, in your community, we would love to have them come and work with Trufi. Please join our Discord. Come follow us on Twitter. Uh, we've got a very active community that is excited about building the future of lending in real estate and way beyond. Uh, and we would love to have everyone come participate. You can find all the links on our site, trufi.io. All right. Have an awesome there. day. Thanks, Rafael. Thank you so much, Yael.